Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and I'm sitting here before my little Hardinge speed lathe, sometimes called a second operation lathe. I have used this in several videos, but I've never talked much about it in regards to its purpose, its limitations, and so on. This is strictly a show and tell video. I will not be making any chips here, but I think some of you will find this interesting. Also, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Hardinge Company and how smitten I have been by them since I was 16. So let's begin. When I was a lad, 16 years of age, I took two years of vocational machine shop in high school and one of the projects that I built was this model of a steam engine. It's a Stewart number no. 9. I've talked about it a lot of different times, so I'm not really going to talk about it now, other than to tell you that I used a hardinge lathe and a little hardinge milling machine to do a lot of the machining on this. So that was my introduction to the Hardinge brothers. So when I was a high school student, the high school owned two hardinge lathes that looked just like this, only they were gray. And we loved them, and the kids used to call for this when they came in class. I got dibs on the hardinge, but since my dad was the teacher, I had dibs on it quite a bit. And they were equipped with collets, but not the lever type of uh, closure, the hand wheel type. They had two speeds, and in many ways this machine is very similar to my hardinge speed lathe if it was cut off right about here, because a speed lathe is kind of a half of a lay that has no tail stock. The high school also owned a beautiful little Hardinge horizontal mill like that that I often use, but I would say Hardinge is more famous for its lathes than what they were for their milling machines. There was also an attachment for the Hardinge milling machine, a vertical head that we often used because there was no bridge port in the shop. Now I owned one of these Hardinge mills about 20 years ago, but I ended up selling it because I had no way of getting it down the steps, although I did manage to get the bridge port down the stairs. All right, that's enough about the milling machines. Let's get back to the half lathe. Now this little hardened speed lathe is a nine inch swing, so it's what four and a half from the center of the work down to the bed. The cross light and compound can easily be removed, I'll show you that in a minute, because there were many many other attachments that were available for this. In fact this is an attachment, not everybody would have bought this because this unit right here might have cost almost as much as the rest of the machine together. Now originally there was a different motor on here. It was three phase and it had a brake on it which also served as the spindle lock and I'll talk more about that later on. So this was converted to a, oh, a cheap out of balance, uh, I think that's a GE motor and it isn't, uh, I wish I had the original. Looking at it from this view I'll raise the belt guard and you can see that there are three speeds here on the step pulley and the speeds are 750, 1800 and 3000 RPM. You can easily change the belt by relaxing the pressure with this lever and originally this machine came with a collet closer that had a lever on it. I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. It is not really that good for home use where you're making what of. A lever type collet closer is far better for production type of work. So that's why I built this hand wheel and that's shown in a video series that you probably have watched already. This is not the original switch. I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. The V bed with the dovetail, I, sh I should call it a dovetail, is hardened and ground and is super precision. So right here, this stud that you see has a tapped hole in it and a lifting eye was screwed into there. So that's the exact center of gravity of the machine if you were going to hoist it, if in fact it had the original motor, which was quite a bit larger than that. 
This is the famous hardened spindle nose. Notice the locking system right here, which I'll talk about in a second. But it does not need a collet adapter. The inside bore here fits the 5C, and of course they are the originators of the 5C collet. C standing for cataract, which I've mentioned in several other videos. I took the collet out so I can show you how I will put the three jaw chuck on there, and this is a buck chuck, adjust to true, with extra jaws. So it's a very nice chuck. And you can see that it's not a threaded spindle, but the taper internally here matches this taper. And notice that there's a little pin right here. Does that show up in the video? Anyway, that pin, whether you can see it or not, will slide on into this slot and then you rotate it one way or the other and it will lock. And this lathe does not have a reverse so it can't spin off. But you need to be careful which way you put the chuck on so that it tends to come to the end of this and when you turn it on it doesn't rotate what would it be like about 30 degrees. I'm not sure if you know what I mean. Always wipe thoroughly and one or two drops of oil. And there is a little bit of a witness mark right there which you probably cannot see and I will line that up with that slot and then rotate it in that direction and it's now tight and ready to use. They did offer a four jaw chuck as well but I do not have it and in fact I use it use this machine most of the time with the collet attachment rather than the chuck. So the purpose of a speed lathe, and they're sometimes called a polishing lathe, you could do all kinds of, of work, even hand work, polishing and finishing with a file or emery cloth or whatever you're doing, without the use of any attachments down here, but I find it most useful with the compound. So by second operation lathe, what we mean is that a man would probably be operating two machines. One that would be behind me right now as I stand here doing the major operations and while it was on automatic feed he would turn around and put the work into the speed lathe and perform one or two operations. It could be cutting off, it could be uh, putting a little taper. I will show you some of the attachments that were available in the original catalog here later. Here's a picture of what the machine looked like originally. This is the cover of the manual that came with it. Notice that it has the quick change collet attachment and I believe that's made by Royal. Look at the motor and this is the magnetic brake on this end that makes the motor quite long and heavy, three phase of course, and there is the switch that I talked about a little bit uh, earlier. This machine has been painted green. It's a terrible color. Originally they were gray and there were some name plates on there which are evidently are long gone. And you can see that they call it the Super Precision HSL 59 Speed Lathe. I brought the cross slide compound assembly over to the bench so you could see it just a little bit better I hope. Notice that everything's ground. There are no rough castings. Right here is the trademark, if I can zoom in on it. That doesn't show up at all, but there's the trademark. I always love the two inch dials that they put on here. They're white in color and they show up very well. This is direct reading, as is this one. And I'll let you decide or determine why it is that the Graduations are close together on this one, but in this direction, relatively far away, I don't think I want to explain that right now. And of course, you can easily loosen the screw right here and turn the collar to zero or whatever dimension or whatever number you want and then tighten it again. There are two socket head cap screws if they are loosened. Well, here's one, and you can't see the one on the other side. I have loosened it already. And then you can turn this compound to any angle you want. And ton 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 
the beautiful little magnifier which I will zoom in on. I realize there's a bit of a glare but that is a magnifier and there are numbers on there as well if you're looking straight down you're looking at an angle. Little Bakelite cover. I've turned the whole thing upside down because in fact it's prettier from the bottom than it is on the top and this has all been scraped as has this and the lead screws are hardened and the ground and just beautifully made today would be a good time for me to clean these up and re-oil them and of course this one as well perhaps you can visualize from this angle that the dovetail bed over on the lathe is held between these two angular pieces whatever they're called and this piece cam operated brings the, the whole unit tight up against that dovetail and if the little magnifier that I showed you is off and you check it with an indicator these two I'm not sure what you call these can be adjusted and brought back into zero. There are dowel pins holding this black piece in alignment. It's of course hardened as well. I just wanted you to see this from the bottom side because it is so well made and that's why these things are so expensive. Is anyone still watching? Is everyone happy? So very quickly you can reinstall the cross slide. And I've already cleaned this on the underside. And it can be moved in any position you want and then instantly locked with that cam lever. And it's ready to use. I have several tool holders for this machine and this is genuine hardened equipment and your high speed bit or carbide for that matter would fit right in there and they went to such a, an effort here this little wedge shaped piece which can move back and forth depending on the thickness of your tool bit cannot be lost because there's a little bit of a washer there and that is for moving your tool up to the proper height and there is an adjustment screw for that. And it is marked as such. I'm sure that would be over a hundred dollars if you ordered a new one. Now no one uses a lantern type tool post anymore but I have one. Hardin's made one. Maybe they don't anymore. But when that comes off I want you to notice a couple details here. They have drilled and pressed little pins into each end of the wedge so the wedge can't fall out. You know how you're always using that. Similarly, the, the ring can't be lost or fall out because it's all held captured or captive. Very nice unit for as often as I might use it. And last and probably least we can still use a quick change tool post on here such as this Aloris brand size A and I did have to make that T-nut. This is probably the unit that I would use the most. The spindle bearings are not serviceable to my knowledge and they are sealed bearings, very precision, and are lubricated for life. Whose life? Mine or the machine's? Here's another picture of it in yellow. I do not like that color. Notice that the cross slide attachment on here is a little different than what I had shown you. And I have to laugh up here where it says tool room accuracy at home workshop prices. I guarantee that you couldn't buy this for a reasonable price in 1985 and you can't now. Here's a picture out of the catalog on the all steel stand that they sold at extra cost. 
The machine itself weighs about three or 350 pounds. At this time I'd like to show you some of the attachments that were available. In the first picture is a radius turning attachment. In this picture, and I've got quite a reflection there, is an attachment for turning a taper. This is the attachment that I have. It's called the facing attachment. This is their facing and forming attachment. This is their grinding attachment and I'm sure that's a do more and it looks just like my little tom thumb that you might see in one of my other videos. Pictured here is their double tool cross slide tooling. I mentioned earlier that the speed lathes have limitations. And the main limitation is that you do not have a tailstock which eliminates the possibility of holding longer work between centers or supporting longer work and you certainly can't do any drilling or reaming or other tailstock operations on this machine. You may have watched my recent videos where I made this drawbar for the 5C collet along with the hand wheel but I remember best as a student the Hardinge drawbar is looking like this and there is the spanner wrench and I particularly liked that notched hand wheel. Here's another view of that wrench and it really was just a stamped sheet metal item but it sure did work swell. Well, I hope you like this little tutorial or show and tell, whatever it may be, about my little hardened speed lathe, second operation lathe, which you'll see me using in videos, I hope more, here in the future. Remember, I have 1,200 shop videos, so check them all out. Leave a comment if you like, and I'll see you in my next video. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.